أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 61st surah of the Holy Quran, in the 8th verse, he says that the enemies of Islam have a plan and an agenda. They have a desire to put out the light of Allah. But Allah answers this attack on the light of Allah. Allah promises that Allah himself will perfect his light even though the enemies of Islam dislike this. We see today, because of what is going on in the world, by the hands of those who act in the name of Islam, but in fact they are disobeying Islam, Islam has been given a bad image and a bad name. Those who were once the friends of Islam are now slowly turning on the religion of Islam. And those voices who were once quiet, and held back on their accusations and criticisms of this holy religion are now becoming more vocal. There is this growing accusation today that Islam is a religion of violence and terror. That the religion of Islam leads to tyranny and it leads to an intolerant rule. Many times the Muslims defend against this accusation by saying that it is only a small minority of people who call themselves Muslims who are causing trouble and committing acts of terror and crime. They are doing it in the name of Islam, but it's only a very small number. While the majority of the Muslims are peaceful, they are tolerant, and they are moderate. In response to this, the enemies of Islam nowadays are saying that you have it wrong that it is those who are committing terror who are actually following Islam. That it is they who have the religion correct and it is the peaceful Muslims and the moderate Muslims who are not truly following Islam. They say that since the terror groups, especially now the most famous one, it is a terrorist state although it has called itself an Islamic state. That because they call themselves Islamic, there must be an Islamic foundation for the actions that they commit. One of the most popular advocates of this accusation against Islam is a popular atheist by the name of Sam Harris. Most of you who are tech savvy and you check your Facebook and your online accounts regularly, you have probably seen a video going around on the internet. It is a clip from an HBO show hosted by Bill Maher, who is an atheist comedian, now has become a political commentator, and he has his own television show on HBO. His guest was Sam Harris, who is his atheist author. And during this segment, Sam Harris is starting to present and propagate his anti-Islamic ideas. And the one voice who was vocal in defending Islam was it a, a Muslim, no, it was an actor by the name of Ben Affleck. And this clip has become very popular. But even before this, this atheist author, Sam Harris, has written many articles, given many speeches, and written books against the religion of Islam. He says about Islam, he says, we are talking about Islam being a religion of peace that has been hijacked by extremists. If ever there were a religion that's not a religion of peace, it is Islam. And he says that all civilized nations must unite in condemnation of a theology that now threatens to destabilize much of the earth. He says, it is time we recognized and obliged the Muslim world to recognize that Muslim extremism 
is not extreme among Muslims. Mainstream Islam itself represents an extremist rejection of intellectual honesty, gender equality, secular politics, and genuine pluralism. The truth about Islam is as politically incorrect as it is terrifying. Islam is all fringe and no center. Basically, he's saying that even if the Muslims are peaceful, the religion itself is all extremism without any moderation. He goes on to say, to see the role that faith plays in propagating Muslim violence, we need only ask why so many Muslims are eager to turn themselves into bombs these days. The answer, because the Quran makes this activity seem like a career opportunity. He goes on to say, the idea that Islam is a peaceful religion hijacked by extremists is a dangerous fantasy and it is now a particularly dangerous fantasy for Muslims to indulge. And in that now famous clip on Bill Maher's show, he said this one small but very telling statement. He said, Islam at this moment is the mother load of bad ideas. There is another atheist who was very popular in the world specifically for the very reason that she rejected Islam. She became an atheist and now the sole focus of her entire career is to work against Islam. Her name is Ayan Hirsi Ali, she's a Somali-born Muslim who rejected the faith and is now an activist in the United States. She says, I see no difference between Islam and Islamism. Islam is defined as submission to the will of Allah as it is described in the Quran. Islamism is just Islam in its most pure form. And whenever in the West they use the word Islamist or Islamism, it is talking about the terrorists who want to establish the rule according to their terrorist ideas. She goes on to say, I was a Muslim once, remember, and it was when I m was most devout that I was most full of hate. She's saying when she was the best Muslim is when she was the most hateful towards other religions and other people in the world. So the accusations of the non-Muslims, especially these few that we have quoted, they can be simplified down as follows. First, they say that Islam is a religion that promotes hate, violence, terrorism, and an intolerant rule. And they say that terrorists such as ISIS, such as Daesh, are the only ones who are correctly and properly following Islamic teaching. They say that Daesh has it right and the rest of us have it wrong. Now for the rest of us, what do they say is the reason that we have not become terrorists? Why are we not a problem yet? They say it for a few reasons. Number one, they say that the moderate and the peaceful Muslims, they don't take their religion seriously. They don't follow it, they don't care for it much and that is why they have not become a problem for us. The other reason is that they have not studied their religion. If they study their religion and they are intent on following it, then they would put into practice those violent ideas. Number three, they say that the Muslims who are peaceful, they pick and choose what they want to follow. So they pick the good parts and they leave out the bad parts. And lastly, they say that if there is a peaceful Muslim, it is because that peaceful Muslim is practicing taqiyya, that that Muslim it's pretending to be peaceful, pretending to be your friend, and tolerant, and just, but secretly that Muslim loves the terrorists and sees the terrorists as their Islamic heroes and the Islamic ideal. So in the face of all of these accusations, we have to ask ourselves a few questions. We have to start at the very beginning and work our way step by step to see if these accusations are true, and we have to be honest to ourselves, and they have to also be academically honest with us. So what is the definition of violence? Violence is described as an unjust or unwarranted exertion of force or power, for example, against somebody's rights or against the laws of a nation. So now that we know what the definition of violence is, we have to see, is there any situation or any place where the majority of the people in the world or even a consensus of the people of the world, of different religions and belief systems, whether they agree if there is a time where violence is actually justified. Is there a time or a situation where it is proper for a person to use violence against someone else? And without a doubt, everyone in the world and all reasonable people would agree that violence is appropriate when used in self-defense. A person can use force, 
to prevent harm or death to himself, to his family, or to his property. And common sense says that this is correct, and the laws of every country say that this is correct. If a person kills a criminal that has invaded his home, has come into his house with a weapon and threatens his life and that of his family, and the owner of the house kills this invader, the law protects him, says that he is not responsible for that death, that he has done the right thing, and the people in his community will praise his courage and his valor. And this applies to nations as well. If a country is invaded by a violent force and its sovereignty is damaged or its critical interests are threatened, then it is justified in using violence to defend its rights. And most people will agree that violence is justified in order to defend basic human rights such as freedom and protecting people from other violence and persecution. So this right to self-defense extends even to those who are safe from that harm. If a person sees another person is being attacked, he is being robbed, and he intervenes in that crime and uses violence to stop the robber, then he is called a good Samaritan. He is called a righteous person. Or if a weak and innocent country is invaded by a tyrant country, and a third country comes in and saves them, protects them from the tyrant, then that country is called a savior. And the people of the oppressed nation will hail them as their heroes. So now we have to look in the Quran. Does Islam teach that self-defense is allowed? We read in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ And fight in the way of Allah with those who fight with you. We see that whenever the verses of Quran are used to show that Islam is a violent religion, 100% of the time these verses are taken out of context. And there are two types of context that we have to consider. The first is, what is the verse before the one that you are quoting and what, is, what are the verses after the one that you're quoting? And we'll get to that inshallah. Allah says, fight in the way of Allah with those who fight with you. وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا and do not exceed the limits. It is saying that even when you are fighting to defend yourself, there are limits that you have to abide by. Inna Allah la yuhibbul mu'attadeen. Surely Allah does not love those who exceed the limits. Waqtuluhum haytho thaqiftumuhum. And kill them wherever you find them. Wa akhrijuhum min haytho akhrajukum. And drive them out from where they drove you out. Wal fitnatu ashaddu min al qatl. And persecution is worse than fighting and slaughter. وَلَا تُقَاتِلُوهُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ حَتَّى يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِيهِ فَإِنْ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوهُمْ كَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ And do not fight with them at the Masjid al-Haram, at the sacred mosque, until they fight with you in it. But if they start fighting you there, then you are given permission to fight against them. And this is the reward of those who wage war against Allah and the non-believers. But if they stop, if they say, we quit, we surrender. Allah is forgiving and merciful. And fight with them until there is no persecution and the religion should only be for Allah. But if they stop, then there should be no violence or hostility except against the zalimin, except the ones who continue in their aggression and injustice. We have passages such as these in the Quran where it says that violence is allowed only in self-defense and that you should not exceed certain limits as explained by the Holy Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and in other verses of the Quran. صلي على محمد. But when these verses are quoted by the enemies of the Muslims, by the enemies of Islam, what they will do is they will take one phrase. They will take the phrase وَقْتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُهُمْ And they will forget about the verses before. They will forget about the rest of the verse that this phrase was in. And they will forget about the verses after, and they will forget about all of the other verses of the Qur'an, 
which explain the details and the conditions of jihad and fighting. They will say, see look, the Quran says that you should kill the non-believers wherever you find them. And they'll put this on headlines. They'll advertise this on the internet, in books, in seminars. And then they will say that, see, Islam is a violent religion. But the meaning of the verses are clear. If somebody wants to be honest to himself, all he has to do is open the Quran, he reads the verse, he reads the passage, and he sees that the person who has claimed that Islam is violent is actually a liar. The verses say that you may only fight those who have started fighting against you, that you must uphold certain limits, otherwise you yourself will then become the criminals. But even though verses such as these exist, Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Even though we have passages such as these in the Quran that obviously and clearly show that Islam is not violent, but it is reasonable. It is common sense. If someone is attacking you, you have the right to defend yourself, but only within certain limits. However, the detractors of Islam still make the accusation that Islam promotes aggression and unjustified violence. Our main attraction for tonight, Mr. Sam Harris, this famous author, one of the most famous atheists in the world, he says, in one of his books called The End of Faith. He says, because they are believed to be nothing less than verbatim transcripts of God's utterances. He is speaking about the Quran and the verses of the Quran. He says, because these verses are nothing less, uh, to the Muslims, they are to be believed to be nothing less than verbatim transcripts of God's utterances. Texts like the Quran and the Bible must be appreciated and criticized for any possible interpretations to which they are susceptible and to which they will be subjected with varying emphases and elisions throughout the religious world. What is he saying? He's saying that the Quran is responsible for the correct interpretation someone takes from it and that the Quran is responsible for the wrong interpretation someone takes from it. Does this make any sense? If a person gives a command and people are listening. One person understands the command, he interprets it correctly, and he acts on it correctly. Yes, then the person giving the command is responsible for that person. But if somebody else purposely twists that command, misinterprets that command, lies about it, can the person giving the command be held accountable for this liar's actions? According to Sam Harris, yes. This does not make any sense at all. Harris, like all of those who attack Islam, they know that they do not have any valid evidence from the Qur'an to say that Islam is a violent religion. So what do they have to do? The only proof that they have left is a misinterpretation, is the willful and purposeful deceit and lies that people draw out of the Qur'an. The only proof that they have is to take a verse out of context, to take a verse against the correct interpretation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah and the 32nd verse, he says, For this reason did we prescribe to the children of Israel that whoever slays one nafs, one soul, unless it is for manslaughter or for mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed all of mankind. And whoever keeps that one nafs alive, keeps that one person alive, it is as though he has kept alive all of mankind. This is the teaching of the Qur'an. This is what Islam says about the value of a human life. If a person kills one human being, it is as if he has killed all of mankind. And if he saves one person, it is as if he has saved all of mankind. But according to Sam Harris and Islam's enemies, if somebody misinterprets the Qur'an, then the Qur'an is at fault. But how can they represent Islam? By disobeying Islam. Even if a terrorist acts in the name of Islam, he is still acting against its teachings. If a terrorist says, I killed this person because the Quran commands me to, he is either mistaken in his idea or he is lying. In either case, how can the Quran be held accountable for this? This is against logic, this is against reasoning. A criminal does not represent the law because he is breaking the law. The law says do not kill, do not murder. 
a person goes and murders, can the law be held accountable for his actions? This is hypocrisy on the part of the person who misinterprets the Qur'an and is intellectual dishonesty by the person who says that the Qur'an is responsible for the one who misinterprets it. If a person calls himself a Muslim, he has to accept the entire Qur'an. All of it. He cannot take one verse out of context as some of these terrorists do. They say they speak in the name of Islam, but they are twisting the message of the Qur'an. Allah Himself answers them. He says, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you then believe a part of the book and then disbelieve in another part of the book? This is the way of the hypocrites. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينِ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا أُولَٰئِكَ مَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Surely those who conceal any part of the book that Allah has revealed and take it for a small price, they eat nothing but fire into their bellies. So if a person says he believes in the Qur'an, he cannot cherry pick. And those who don't believe in the Qur'an, they have to be intellectually honest and analyze the comprehensive message of the Qur'an. So whether the person is a Muslim, he should believe in the Qur'an and take 100% of it. And if a person is not a Muslim and he wants to judge the Qur'an, he has to judge the entire book. He cannot take a piece and forget the rest. If we say that the Bible contains passages that command, for example, Prophet Moses and others to go and slaughter cities and towns, what will the Christian and the Jew say about our interpretation? If we say that Judaism and Christianity are violent religions, because if you read certain passages of the Old Testament, Prophet Moses is commanded to go kill all the men and the women, to burn the grounds, to kill all the cattle and the animals. If we take from this that Judaism and Christianity are violent religions, how will the Christians and the Jews answer us? They will say, no, you have taken this verse out of context. You have to look at the whole message of the book. Well, this is the same thing we say with the Qur'an, that you cannot take a verse out of its context. If we say to an atheist that your atheist ideology leads to the communism of the Soviet Union and the mass murders that, and genocide that that produced, to the genocides of Pol Pot and other atheists who have taken command of nations in the past, they will say, no, 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 those people, they did not represent the atheist ideology. They were misinterpreting it and they were using it wrong. The logic and the reasoning has to go both ways. If they expect us to respect their ideologies, which we do, and respect means that we analyze it correctly and we don't misinterpret it, then we should expect the same from them. And we should not fall for the trap which is now being propagated that says that moderate Muslims are the ones who do not take the Qur'an literally that they don't follow the Qur'an 100%, they don't follow the exact meaning of the Qur'an. The exact opposite of this is the truth. The peaceful Muslim, the peaceful believer, is the one who follows the Qur'an to the letter, is the one who follows the hadith of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt to the letter. Only those who are misinterpreting the Qur'an, only those who are purposely twisting the message of the Qur'an for their own agenda, whether it is terrorists like Daesh, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban and others who murder Muslim, Christian, Jew, Sunni, Shia, it doesn't matter to them. This is not the message of Islam. This is not the message of any religion. This is the message of an ideology which they have created themselves and they put a false face onto it and say that this is from Islam. The message has to be put out to the rest of the world about the true nature of Islam. In order for this to happen, every single Muslim, whether man or woman, young or old, must understand his religion. It is a shame that there are non-believers, non-Muslims who can quote the Qur'an better than many Muslims, who will quote hadith better than many Muslims. And they will quote the Qur'an and the hadith in order to twist the meaning. And then our youth and those who others whether young or old who do not know the religion very well, they come across a brick wall. They don't know how to answer because they have not studied. They have not researched. 
They might have the faith in their hearts, but they don't have the knowledge, the expertise, and the experience to answer back and stand up for their religion. The mission of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the same today as it was when he started the uprising against the tyrant Yazid. The purpose that Imam Hussein alayhi salam explained himself was that he was going to establish Amr bil Ma'roof in joining the good and Nahi an al Munkar forbidding the evil and in order to correct the false interpretations and false teachings that had been brought into the religion of Islam by those who were against Islam. The mission is exactly the same today. And the only way that this is going to happen, the only way that we can call ourselves the lovers of Imam Hussein is to help him in his mission. And we cannot help him in his mission. We cannot be of any benefit to him unless we equip ourselves with the knowledge and the experience necessary. When someone comes up with an accusation against Islam, it does no help to us and it does no help to the religion if we respond with emotional responses. If we become emotional, we become angry, we become hateful with our words. And the other person is calm and they are quoting Quran and Hadith while we respond with a tirade. What is going to be the picture that the bystanders get? That the non-Muslim is speaking reasonably and the Muslim is becoming angry. No, we have to be what the Quran and Islam expect of us. We have to be the reasonable, the logical ones. Because all of the answers that these people are raising are in the Quran. All of these answers are in the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. They are as bright as the sun on a cloudless day. But it is up to us to pick up these treasures. It is up to us to gain this experience. And it is up to us to stand up for Islam. So that when a person like Sam Harris speaks against Islam, that we don't have to wait for a non-Muslim actor like Ben Affleck to stand up for us. And then we disseminate that across the internet. No, it should be us ourselves. We should be the one standing up for ourselves and standing up for the message of Islam. Insha'Allah for the next few nights we will go into more detail as far as these accusations against Islam and we will see who it is truly that is an ideology of violence and why it is that the Muslims have gotten such a bad reputation and what we can do insha'Allah in the very near future to turn this around. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.